All right. So here we go. We're going to do the, uh, this is the goal. Let me show you what we're doing here. So this is the wiring diagram. We're going to draw the loads like we did the other day. I'm going to show you now instead of just loads, we got two different types of controls to introduce other than a single pole switch. So again, before I get into it, some of the loads we're drawing, the shaded fan pole, shaded fan motor does not have a uh, capacitor. So all you need is a neutral and a hot. So there's no cap on that. Here's your thermostat. Cold control, some people call it, but it's a thermostat. So it's going to be a single pole switch that closes on temperature rise. Your transformer. Now yours should have looked like this for this particular project, where it only had two wires for primary. Black and white, what does that mean? 120 volt. Yep, and then 24 volts secondary coming out. Now remember, all this is is an iron bar with wires wrapped around it connected to another iron bar with a either less or more number of wraps wrapped around it, the iron bar. So that iron bar transfers the power by induction from this side of the voltage of 120 volts to this side. And if it has less wraps, the voltage will drop down. And that's what happens over here. This has less wraps. You might get some that have, like, these are the ones for HVAC. So, like, your air conditioning units have one like, like this because it's not 120 volts for those indoor units. You either have 208 or 240. So you will have to measure after you install your unit to read either if you're getting 208 volts or 240 volts and change the tap. So whatever you're reading, if you're reading 208, make sure that the tap is on 208. If you're reading 240, you might have to move the tap to 240. And then secondary is 24 volts. It's always going to be for HVAC, 24 volts. Prime. You just put the little things on the right to read it? Yep, the meter, the test leads. You just put the test leads on it. Now, in some of you guys for your project, you have this transformer, which was a little more complicated, but it's still it's a multi-tap transformer, which means this side's your primary. You had the black and the white. That's for 120 volts. Could have also used, using black as a common, interchanged it with the red for 208 if I had 208 volts, or the orange if we had 240 volts. But you didn't use, we only had 120. So you didn't need to use these, so we tied these off to the side. And to make things more confusing for you on this transformer, on the secondary side, it had where it was red and green, that's these two here, this gave you 24 volts. But you could have, they might use this for a doorbell. Doorbells don't work on 24 volts, they work on 12 volts. So they could use this one for a doorbell by using the red and the orange, or the red and the white. The red and the white gave you 12 volts, and the orange and the white gave you 2.5 volts. So you, this one here was a multi-tap. So that's why you got this one. We left this all tied up together so that it wouldn't confuse you. And this one looked more like this one here. Okay, But you could have just looked on that and figured it out as well. The last thing will be the last load, which is this is a two-part deal. We have a 24-volt coil on our contactor here. And we have 240 volts able to go through the contacts. L1, L2 is where it's coming from our breaker or disconnect, and T1, T2 is where it's going to the load, or in this case, our fan motor. So we're going to go ahead and draw it. So let's go ahead and title it up. Ready? Everybody title it up. Edison. This is Edison Academy. HVAC Electrical Project number three. other words known as the fan T-stat contactor and transformer project. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the rungs first on this one. I'm going to put L1 over here, L2 over here, and I'm going to go ahead and draw them down. Some people find this is an easier way to build a wiring diagram. Now I know I'm going to put a switch in, so I'm going to leave a little space there for a switch later on. It's going to be in series. And L2 is coming straight over here. Now I'm only going to do the primary first, and then after we do the transformer, I'll do the secondary, which will be my control circuit. So, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and wire. The transformer is wired hot all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the transformer in right here. So I have 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten wraps on that side. And I'm going to do just maybe two wraps, maybe three on this side. All right, to show that this is primary, this is secondary. Some diagrams draw them exactly the same. You just know that they're primary and secondary. The thing that we're controlling is a fan motor. So I'm going to draw that above here, the fan motor. Just put that in the middle. And then mark it fan motor. Fan motor's got a set of contacts, though, that break the power to it on the hot side. So I'm going to put those contacts here. It's not just a switch like that, though. Contacts normally have two lines that go perpendicular to the drawing. So there it is. There's my contacts. That should be a little closer. I'm also going to draw my switch contacts up here while I'm doing this. A single pole switch. This was the main disconnect for you guys that you used to disconnect your power. So. Alright, there's the switch. Now I can go ahead and finish drawing in my lines. So power's coming in through the switch. Transformer was hot all the time, changing the 120 volts to 24 volts. Right now, power was coming in and waiting at this side of the contact for it to close, for it to be able to get power to the fan motor. And I'm also going to identify this contact here with a C above it. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in the coil for the contactor. Now that's going to be controlled not with 120 or 240 volts, but with... I'm going to go ahead and use the 3 8 hole here. That's going to be controlled with 24 volts. So I'm going to put a little circle there. I'm going to put a C there. And what was controlling that coil? What did you have to wrap around Frosty for it to get power to that coil? What did you call that? So I'm going to draw this one below the screw. Because this thing closed on temperature rise. What was the piece right here that I'm drawing? Yeah, but what kind of switch that closes with temperature? What do they call it? Yeah, thermostat. You got it. All right. So that's it. That's it. That's the loads right there and the control. So what was happening is the power is coming on the 24 volt side, the common. You pretty much took the common from the thermostat and wired it right to the coil on the contactor. And then you had the other wire from your thermostat on the 24 volt or the secondary side coming to the cold control to the thermostat to the other side of the contact coil and that's it so I'm gonna go ahead and draw on mine I'm gonna put the legend here in a second but if you want you can also put that you did have everything bonded with the ground so I could put a ground there like that. Alright, and that's my ground. So the way it worked was, you closed the switch. That turned on power to the transformer, energized this circuit so that if it was warm, if this thermostat was warmed up, the pressure would build up in the sensing bulb and snap contacts closed from one terminal to the other terminal which would energize this coil here. When that coil energized we would close this set of contacts right there and allow power now to go through and turn on the fan. When the fan kicked on it cooled down the sensing bulb which lowered the pressure which then opened the contact open that thermostat because it opens on temperature drop and then that would open this set of contacts here back up 
and that would shut the fan off. That's how that worked. So we're going to go ahead and put our legend. I put 10. It doesn't really matter. You can even put, like I said, some put the same on either side on their drawing. But you just know that. And then you, some even write that this is 140 or 120, and that's a 24 volt on that there. Also, sometimes they put numbers, like my power's coming in here at number one. At number two, we had a switch. And number three is the first rung where it's broken for the fan motor and uh, has the contact coil. Number four is where the primary winding is for the transformer. Number five is the secondary winding. And number six is where the thermostat ties into the coil for the contactor up there. So they, they sometimes number them up like that. Let me go ahead and also identify the legend, which is this right here was the, what was FM? Fan motor. Fan motor. Now remember, this one doesn't need a cap because it's not a very high torque motor. It's a low torque motor. It just is really for moving air and a refrigerator. All right. And then we had, uh, I think I drew this 3 8 here. What was this piece here? with a C in the middle. Yep, and it was two part. Remember, that's my contactor coil. So usually somewhere, and I'm gonna put them both together, there's gonna be a set of contacts that go with that coil. But the whole thing is a contactor. And then the other information about it was it's a 240 volt. The most amps it can hold is 30 through it, 30 amp, and it has a 24 volt coil because there's others that are not 240 and then there's others that can handle more amperage or have a different size coil maybe 120 maybe 240 208 there's different coils then what are some of the other things we had so I got two things there what are some of the other things that you had to identify up here yeah we don't, well, I'm not gonna do ground we know it but what was the thing here that has the two lines like this and the wraps what was that and I, I'm going to do them both the same on this one. What is that? What's that symbol there? It was this piece here. What do we call it? Transformer. Yep. And this one was 120 volt, 24 volt. And I could even go a little bit further and talk about this being a 40 VA volt amps. In other words, they take the voltage. If I wanted to figure out how many amps this circuit could hold, I divide 24 by 40, and I believe I get 1.7, 1 1.3, 1 something like that. Somebody divide 24 by 40. Divide 40 by 24 real quick. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and draw the thermostat which the thermostat looks like this now. It's not just a single pole, single throw switch. Remember, we had it closed on temperature rise, so I'm going to put it below the screw terminal, and then I add this funny 1.6, yep, 1.7 amps. Yeah. So a 40 VA, if I put three, four contacts or coils on there, it would have too much amp draw, and this transformer would not work. It would not pull down. The magnet wouldn't be strong enough to pull down the contacts. If you have more than one, or two or three, you have to look at the VA. So big circuits that have, and there are some in HVAC that have like six or seven contacts, contactor coils. So they either might add another transformer or they get a 75 VA transformer, which that one can handle up to three amps. But usually you can tell if it's not the right size transformer and you go to power up the contactor, it chatters the contacts because it can't keep it pulled down enough and then it doesn't keep the load on. So there is, what was that with that little symbol? What does that make this single pole switch? Yeah, that is my thermostat. All right, and that one there, I'm going to put, it closes on temperature rise. I could also say opens on temperature fall, or it's satisfied on temperature temperature fall. So when it drops it's satisfied. And then the last thing you had was this piece up here. I'm not going to do the ground because we know what that means, but that was your 
single, pull, single, throw, switch. And again, that one we used was a 120 volt, 15 amp capacitor. And that's your project. So if the fan motor wasn't kicking on, first thing I would do is make sure that we had power here at L1, L2. Maybe the switch is open. So then I would hopscotch. If I don't have 120 volts here, I would hopscotch back to the contact. Maybe there's a loose connection or broken wire. If I don't have 120 volts here, actually I'd be able to see that the contacts weren't pulled down and I jump back to here. So here is T T1, that's L1. Go back to the line. If I had 120 volts there, but not 120 volts there, and the contactor isn't pulled down, what does that mean? What pulls this C down? What, what makes this close? Temperature. The temperature, yes. So I would go back to see, maybe the thermostat isn't calling for this to close. So now I would have to step down here. What would I read down here? 24 volts. So I'd go back to here. If I'm reading 24 volts here, that means this coil should be energized, pulling the magnet down, letting the fan motor come on. But if I don't read 24 volts there, then like that other project, I got to start hopscotching. I got to check to one side of the thermostat, move the meter to the other side of the thermostat. And if I'm reading 120 volts there, but not there, what does that mean about the thermostat? If I'm reading 120 volts on one side, but not the other, what's that mean? Maybe it's not on. Maybe I need to take a screwdriver and turn it. Turn it to a lower setting. Or, if I turn it back and forth and hold on to it with my hand, which should call it for cooling, should make it close on temperature rise when I hold it in my hand. Because really this thing's supposed to shut off at about 35 degrees and kick on at about 40 degrees. There's only about a 5 degree temperature difference for the spread between when it kicks on and kicks off. But if I'm holding it and I've got it set down to the coldest setting and it still doesn't energize between this to this, I got a bad thermostat. So I got to change out my thermostat. Put a new thermostat in. If I'm reading 120 volts here, 120 volts here, or 24, I'm sorry, 24 volts here, 24 volts here, and 24 volts there, then this should energize, which means my fan motor can come on. Now, if this is energized, and I'm reading 120 volts here and here, but the fan motor isn't coming on, what's my problem? I got the voltage, but the motor isn't spinning, so what does that mean? Bad motor, bad fan motor. So I would disconnect the power, pull these leads off the motor here, and this is where I'd switch gears. I would start, instead of measuring voltage, I'd pull the leads off and measure resistance. Switch the meter to resistance, and if I'm reading some resistance, the motor's probably good. If it reads zero, well, it's not good. It's got to have some resistance, and the value's not important. Each motor has a different value of resistance, but if I read some resistance, that means it's probably good. And then if I read where it, nothing, where it says OL, open link on my meter, well, that means the winding burned up, and it's open inside somewhere, and it's not making contact. So, yes, you'd have to change out the fan motor, put a new fan motor in, and we're done. So that's some ways with this one that you could use this for troubleshooting three or four different ways. If I'm reading 120 volts here but no 24 volts there, what's that mean about this part right here? If I got 120 volts on this side, but I measure, I got to wire it up to the contactor, and I'm not reading 24 volts here, what does that mean about this part? transformer is bad. It's not inducing the power to the other side of the coil. So change out the transformer. That's the disconnect. That would be like this switch here, but that disconnect was a blade type disconnect. And it melted because they had one of these wires touching the ground and they didn't test it with the meter before they tried to plug that back in. And it shorted. And, the, and it's when it shorts, it gets really hot. It still works. 